Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to demonstrate how to paint a bear with a fall background forest on an 11 by 14 inch canvas, a super colorful painting. I love this design, I had so much fun with it and I love bears. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, the background of this painting includes colors that kind of bend at a curved arc direction. We're going to start by painting our background um, a blend of these three colors. I have primary yellow, primary red, and brilliant purple on my palette. And we are going to be using a three-quarter flat wash brush and I'm going to start with the yellow. So I loaded my brush in the water, kind of tapped it dry a little bit, but let that water kind of thin that yellow down a little bit because this is a first layer sort of under layer of our painting. So it needs to be relatively thin. And I'm going to start at the top and paint about four to five inches down the canvas. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, but we want to go in a curved direction. So as I'm painting this, I am arcing it. It's going to kind of look like a rainbow in the background, the way that I'm arcing the paint strokes. But you want to go all the way across with your paints and go in that arced, curved direction. And we're going to continue with this curved thing all the way down to almost the bottom where the ground is. And then we're going to start painting left and right when we get to that point. So I went about four inches down and I'll go just a little bit further, maybe another inch to inch and a half because this needs to blend with our primary red. So I wanna bring that yellow down just a little bit so that when I grab my primary red, I can blend that primary red up into the yellow without turning it all orange. So when we're ready for our primary red, we're gonna load our brush in that red without rinsing it. And we're gonna start below our yellow and very gently, still going in that rainbow direction, blend that up into your yellow and it's going to turn a really pretty bright orange. And just work that transition zone so that's where those two colors meet and they're blending together. So I'm going over that area, working that paint, going over those multiple, multiple times and that allows your colors to blend. And I'm just very softly bringing that light orange color kind of up into the yellow, but I don't wanna take over all of my yellow because I really like that bright yellow right at the top. So I wanna leave that alone. And I wanna go down further with my primary red. So I'm gonna load more red on my palette and I'm gonna to continue to paint my rainbow going down, bringing that primary red down. You might find that it's just orange at this point, and if you want more of that primary red color showing, you can rinse the brush off or wipe that yellow off your brush and then kind of just load it in just that red. Primary red is a really pretty color because it's kind of a dark pink looking color, so you might um, get some pink tones in there with that red, which is makes that background really pretty. And I'm just gonna keep going down with that red, another four inches, three to four inches. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. If you need to thin your paint down a little bit with water, you can add a teeny bit of water into your paint. Just don't add enough to where it's dripping. And sometimes when you add too much water, the water kind of seeps under the paint that's already on the canvas and it creates some white spots that are hard to cover up. So just be really careful with the water. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush because I'm going to transition to this purple and it would turn way too brown if I didn't rinse the yellow orange colors off of my brush. The purple will blend with our primary red, but we wanna make sure we get that yellow off. So I'm gonna go ahead, rinse the brush off, and then I'm going to transition to my purple here. Go ahead and wipe that off. And we are going to, I'm gonna grab primary red and purple and mix it on my palette. Just gonna kind of temper this color a little bit so it'd be easier to blend. You're going to get a really pretty sort of magenta color. So we're gonna take that and start below our reddish color. And I'm going to introduce that up into it, blend it up. So with this purple, and because there's a little bit of orange in this area, you might get a little bit of a brown color 
you can see how mine's already starting to look a little bit muddy, but that's okay. We don't need to stress about that. We can just keep going and our leaves that we will be painting later on in this painting will disguise that. So it's not a big deal if you got a little bit of brown mixed into there. I'm gonna continue going down with my purple and some of that red that's still kind of blending in with it. And so I want to go down to where there's about three and a half inches to four inches of a gap on the bottom of the canvas. So if you want to measure that to see if you've gone down enough, just make sure there's three to four inches, preferably more like four, because if I measure mine, it's about four inches from the bottom. And you could also take your bare template and just make sure that he's going to fit because this that white area that we have left, that's going to be green and brown, our ground area. And our ground area, we're gonna start making our strokes go not so much in an arc curved rainbow direction. We're gonna start making it go kind of um, in more of a flat direction to make it look more like the ground. So what you need to do next is we're gonna make this interesting green color. It's kind of a spring green. So we're gonna be mixing purple with green together. It sounds kind of funny, but it makes that green look a little bit more natural, but also lets that green kind of blend with our purple a little bit. So we're gonna load our palette with brilliant yellow green and that brilliant purple. <clears throat> and you can use your three quarter flat brush to mix your colors. So we don't want a lot of purple, what I did right here was what you shouldn't be doing. You wanna mix just a little bit of purple. So if you do a lot of purple with the green, it's not going to look that green. You wanna mix a lot of green with just a little bit of purple. So about three parts green to one part purple. And it's gonna make this kind of um, muddy pea color green. And that's what we're using right here. So we wanna take that moss green color or whatever you wanna call it um, and just kind of distribute it under your purple, making kind of a, a distant area in the forest, kind of further back, and a little bit more green on there. So I'm adding more of that pure green, just kind of blending it in there. So kind of starting out in a curved direction, but I wanna kind of force my strokes to go more straight at this point, because now we're on the ground. So about right here, I did left and right. So I filled up the arc area below the purple and it kind of meshed and blended with that purple and that's okay. And right here, we're doing left and right, added just a little bit more of that pure green and less of that purple in that area. And then there is about a two inch gap now, about inch and a half to two inches. And we're gonna do that with raw sienna. So without even rinsing that brush off, you can grab your raw sienna. I also loaded titanium white on my palette and I mixed about equal parts of that brown and white together. It's gonna to make a lighter version of that brown and just kind of fill in your bottom ground area. This is where our bear is standing. So it's kind of the forest floor area. Being very abstract and loose about this. Um, so adding a little bit of white and Brown, you can double load your brush and kind of let it blend on the canvas. But instead of doing left and right strokes, I'm doing sort of like these short little textured strokes to kind of create that ground texture. So um, the further back that land is, it's a little bit lighter. So I'm grabbing a little bit extra white back in that area. It does blend nicely with your spring pea green color back there and then add a little extra brown on the bottom just to make it a tad bit darker on the bottom. That's gonna create some depth in your ground area. But we're being kind of loose. We don't need to let this look like realism at all. Just short little angled strokes and we have the base of our ground. We will go back later and add some more texture in this area once our bear is in. But for now, we have the base layer of all the colors in this painting, and we can just start layering on the rest of the details in this. So our next step is going to involve using the bear template. So you need to let this dry first before we do the bare template. So let it dry. You can use a blow dryer to dry it real quick. You can take a break and come back, but we need our bare template. So this bare template can be printed out on one sheet of paper. 
So if you're using an 11 by 14 or a similar size canvas, you just print it out on the one piece of paper. I recommend you cut it down so it's easier to kind of position your bear so you can cut it on the dotted line if you want. You can cut around him if that's easier, but I don't really recommend that. Just cut it how I have it like this. And then you can position him. Uh, you want to look at the bottom of his paws to make sure that his paws are in the brown area and he's not floating in the forest area or on the green. He, his bottom of his feet need to be in the brown area. So that is about an inch uh, from the bottom of the canvas. So if you want to measure one inch below the bottom of his feet. And he's very centered. If you don't want to center him, you can put him more to the left or to the right. Um, that's up to you. But you want to just Put your graphite paper shiny side down below your template and just trace all of your lines. You want to do it relatively firmly because a little bit of a dark background, it still shows up, but press a little bit firmly so that your template can be seen uh, easier. And then we want to go ahead and load our palette with ultramarine blue, Mars black, and titanium white. So yes, this is a black bear but we are going to use the blue and the white to help create color variations in our black. So if we just painted the bear solid black, he wouldn't really show up in some areas and we need to somehow create contrast. So I'm using my number four round brush and I'm loading it in the Mars black. So just the black right now. And we are going to start with his ears. So solid black, no mixing colors for the ears. Just paint both the ears, solid black, super easy but we are gonna start blending in some other colors here very quickly. So after you paint the two ears, you want to go ahead and let's start by doing the top part of his head. So we can continue with our black right here. So doing, doing short strokes, so short little strokes, a little bit at a time. And I wanna go around his eyes, so just still with that black, little short strokes, I'm going around both of those eyes. Give him a black ring around his eyes. So we'll do, we'll, we're gonna go around the bridge of his nose and his nose too. I'm gonna go ahead and mix kind of a dark grayish blue color. I just had black, white, and blue on my brush. So I mixed about equal parts of all those colors. And right here, I'm gonna start introducing that lighter color. So it's lighter over here, little short curved contouring strokes. And we want it to kind of blend with that black ring that we already created around his eyes. And I'm just gonna bring it down, going around the nose area. So I'm leaving that blank for now. So when I go load to the brush, I grab a little bit more dark in that, for that area right there. So you can see the light towards the top, a little bit darker towards the bottom. So those are, that's the technique we're gonna to use to create the color variation in the fur of our bear. So over here on the right side, I'm gonna make that a little bit darker. I'm going around his eye. So that fur just kind of collects in the middle, kind of curves, kind of parts down the middle. A little bit of white and blue, a little bit of black. So a lighter version of that black. I'm just going to kind of fill in this top area, but again, leaving everything kind of below that blank for now because that's going to be brown. And I'm just going to take my time, kind of curve and contour my strokes. I'm going to go around his nose area, fill in this right part of his head, down here as well. Just little short strokes, creating a variety of different shades of that black. So we have the head kind of filled in now. So we have this area right here, it's gonna be dark. So I wanna go ahead and go back over this, the furthest right part of his head. I'm gonna add a lighter color in there and just kind of blend it out. So now that is lighter. And then I'm gonna paint this uh, left part of the top part of kind of his shoulder area. It's kind of curved and hunched. So that part is just solid black. So you can see 
that we created contrast in that area. So now the head stands out from this part of his back. And this is solid black and I'm just doing short strokes. Those are kind of going downwards and I can introduce some blue in there to give that black some variations, but I'm just dragging my color downwards. I'm gonna do this front leg as well, dragging that downwards. A little bit of blue in the area, so you can see little pops of blue. Thanks for pretty color variation. And I'm making this part lighter and I'm gonna blend it back in to let it be darker so that our leg is gonna stand out from our other leg. Grab a little bit more black. So I just kind of did some wet on wet blending to highlight that right part of his leg. I'm just making sure these strokes are just curving and going in the direction of the shape of the bear. Taking my time. And then we can paint his other leg. So his other leg is also lighter on the right side and then darker on the left. Fill in the area under his nose. Again, we're keeping that nose area blank for now because that's going to be painted brown in a later step. So I'm just filling in this bottom region of the bear. So it's mostly dark, mostly black in this region. The other leg stands out because we already highlighted it on the right side. Add a little bit of lighter color on the right side of this leg, but for the most part, it's it's shadowy. Go in and fill the rest of his leg and foot. His feet, I used mostly just the black, so dark, shadowy on his feet. And then we want to just keep going. So we have his back. Back, I'm going to start by kind of filling in that curved shape. I'm going to switch to a 12 bright brush. So this brush is going to help us cover up larger areas. So with this, I just mixed myself a bluish, blackish, white color by using the blue, black, and white together for some color variation. And I'm just making sure I'm just going in that direction so those strokes curve and contour around the bear to form the shape, kind of angular strokes to fill in that large area. Um, the upper part of his shoulder that we did dark black is still gonna stand out because we're gonna add a little bit of lighter color next to it so that part stands out. So a little bit of blue and white, just a few strokes, try not to over blend it. So that it kind of shows some variety of color. And just fill in his back leg area. So his leg that's further in the back and his feet, I'm gonna do that with the round brush so I can get in there and do that kind of curvy shape. But this is solid black on his feet. It kind of blends up into the rest of his leg. And his other leg back here, also solid black. So you wanna just outline it. If you want to um, do the fur texture, you can just kind of do these little angled lines that kind of stick out. So I kind of did a little bit of fur texture on the template drawing. So you can kind of just follow that and do your little angled strokes with the round brush that are kind of sticking out. And then this leg, solid black, helps to just kind of outline that shape and then fill it in solid. So 
So right here, I want this to stand out from that back leg. So I added more blue, a little bit of white to my brush that stands out. Just kind of dragging that fur texture kind of down so it overlaps that a little bit. But you can see how that different color helps that to stand out from his back leg. And I'll do a little bit more fur texture. I want to kind of leave it unblended. So we see some white streaks in there, some blue streaks in there. We don't want to kind of overpaint it because I like that variation in color. Add a little bit of lighter color over here to kind of highlight the right left part of his leg. You can add some lighter color to the right part of his head. Just be really careful not to make too much brighter color in that black. Next we're going to get, we're going to work on his nose and eyes next. So we want to go ahead and rinse those brushes off. And the bridge of his nose I did with raw sienna and titanium white. So you want to go ahead and mix about equal parts of titanium white with your raw sienna. It's going to make a lighter version of that color. So brown and white mixed together. And we're using our number four round brush. And then you want to just go ahead and paint this area little, very, very short strokes. It's a tiny, tiny area. If this brush is too big, you can switch to an even smaller brush if that helps. We want to go around his actual nose because that's going to be black. I'm going to go around the nose and kind of just extend that downwards a little bit. And you don't want to cover any of his eyes or anything. So that's just that light brown. And before that dries, I'm gonna grab just the brown and just add a few little darker colors, especially in the middle part. And just bring it up, just a little bit of texture on the very top. Again, it's a very small area. You don't have to make it look realistic. So there's the brown part. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe my brush off. You can rinse it off if you want, but it worked for me just to wipe all that brown off. I'm going to go ahead and do the black. So a little bit of black right there on the tip of the brush. And then you want to just go ahead and paint his nose shape. So it's like a triangular shape, curved points. So there's his nose. And then we have kind of a darker area below the nose and where his mouth is. So we're going to be very simplistic about that. And I'm just going to do like a little, little tiny mouth right there. And just a little dot, a little vertical line just below his nose. Very, very simplistic. I have a little bit of background color kind of still showing through. So I'm just grabbing some black and white right here, the color of his fur right here. And I'm just adding that in there so whatever kind of purple background is still showing through i just kind of filled that in and then i did a little bit of highlighting on the right side of his nose just a teeny tiny bit of white just right there very very subtle and then a teeny tiny little kind of highlight on his nose just a little curve on the right part of his nose gives him that shiny nose effect and then we're going to go ahead and paint his eyes. So eyes are raw sienna, not mixed with anything, just raw sienna. And so those circles are purple now. I'm just going to paint with those circle, those purple circles brown. So solid coat of that. And then little tiny bit of black on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to do a little tiny circle inside of that. I did not wait for the brown to dry. If you wanted to wait for the brown to dry because the brown was too saturated, you can do that. A little black right there in the center for the black part of his eyes. And then again, you can wait for this to dry or you can do it now. Um, I'm gonna go around his eyes to kind of outline that with the black may not be necessary for you. I just kind of re outlined that. And then with the black, I added a little bit of texture kind of in his head area. 
give him some fur texture above his eyes. And then with the white, I did very carefully. This might even work better with a Q-tip, or not a Q-tip, a um, toothpick. It's a little, I did two little tiny dots right there um, in the black part of the eye, one kind of at the top, and then the other one kind of diagonally towards the middle part. Very, very small detail, but gives him um, some highlight in his eyes. We are done with our bear and we are going to move on to adding more landscape details in the background. And we're going to be doing the leaves next. So the leaves are very, very simple. And I'm going to start with my yellow leaves. I'm loading my palette with primary yellow and titanium white. And I will be using this bright brush. So this is the 12 bright brush. And the technique, if you've never done this style leaves, they're very, very simple. You're just flip-flopping your brush. So I'm just stroking it. So if you do just the solid yellow, it doesn't really show up against the yellow. That's why we're gonna add a little bit of that white. So I'm double loading my brush in yellow and white. And these are relatively thick strokes. So I'm kind of laying it on there thick. So yellow, white, and you're doing short angled strokes. You're flip-flopping your brush to create your leaves kind of at the top, yellow and white. You can have it overlap your red area. It shows up really nicely over that red. Um, but for the most part, we wanna just add these in the top area and you can just make it as dense as you want, but you don't really have to fill up all the space because we already have it painted yellow and it just kind of fades away. So not all of it has to be filled up. You can keep it simple. And we'll be doing branches and then adding a layer of leaves over our branches in a later step. So then we want to kind of work our way down and add some red and orange leaves. So I'm going to freshen my palette with some more of the primary red. And without rinsing it, I'm going to just grab some red. So same thing. We can bring some of these red leaves up into our yellow-orange area. But for the most part, we want to just keep that top part mostly yellow and white leaves. This one, if we um, are grabbing yellow on our brush, which you can, it can make some orange leaves in that area and also helps that to stand out against that reddish background. So I'm kind of just loading my brush in the red, the yellow. You can even use a little bit of white if you want. But you're just flip-flopping the brush, doing your little leaf strokes in that reddish area we can bring some up into the yellow area we can let that kind of mingle up there a little bit kind of let that blend and fade we can even bring a few yellow pieces down if we want but again we don't have to fill up that entire area solid with leaves because we already have our background painted and we're going to do the same thing with the purple and with the purple i'm actually going to load my palette with some ultra or i'm going to use the ultramarine blue too so with the purple and the blue this is going to make a really pretty purplish blue sort of indigo color and it's going to help that color stand out against the purple background so i'm doing purple blue leaves in this area so again just kind of flip-flopping that brush going around our bear. We don't want any of our leaves to overlap our bear. going to rinse and I'm going to go in and add some more orange colors kind of bring some of these orange colors down into the blue purple area but try not to let that blend and mix with the blue and purple because then it'll be kind of a muddy color but just bring some of those down into the lower regions helps those colors just kind of uh, transition better grab some red pieces kind of bring, bring some red pieces down next i want to create some texture in our ground area so i'm going to rinse my 12 bright off 
and I'm going to utilize this brush again and use the raw sienna color. But instead of flip flopping strokes, I'm going to use the tip of the brush to kind of create some angled grass style strokes. So I'm just doing these like different angled grass pieces around his the bottom of his feet. So instead of using the full width of the brush, I'm using the tip of the brush to create these kind of strokes. But they are kind of angling in all different directions. I can add a little tiny bit of black to that brown as well. That is going to make it darker and I can create some darker, more shadowy pieces. Again, just using the tip of the brush to create different angles around the bear, around the bottom of his feet, creating that ground texture. I'll add a few more darker pieces just under his feet, kind of make a darker, more shadowy area under there, but keep it very loose, very abstract. Kind of bring some pieces up. Next, we are going to start painting these tree trunks and branches in. I am going to go ahead and load my palette with Mars Black. You're also going to need titanium white. So if you need to put some fresh titanium white on your palette, go ahead and do that. So not all of the trees are solid black. Some are gray because they're further in the background. So we're gonna start with our gray trees. And I'm using the number four round brush. I made a gray on my palette. And I'm just gonna start painting these in. So there's some very small branches, tree branch thingies, kind of in the distance. And those start kind of on the top part of our green area. They go up, not all the way up, just kind of maybe halfway up. So they definitely overlap the purple area and kind of overlap our red area. So very loosely, I'm doing these thin vertical lines that kind of branch off. And we can do several on both sides of the bear. We can have some that are going behind the bear. So these are very thin lines. I'm just using the tip of the brush to create these loose thin lines. It helps when you're doing tree branches, it really helps to kind of loosen that paint up with a little bit of water so that when you make your paint stroke, it flows nicely because that water thinned that paint down a little bit. And then I'm going to start making some larger and darker branches. So this one right here, the base of that trunk was a little bit thicker than some of my gray trees. And this one goes way up all the way to the top of the canvas. So those tree branches go up into that yellow region. And this piece, very thin line that goes loosely up into the yellow region. And we're just going to continue to paint some more tree branches. So that one was our first main kind of large tree. I'm gonna do another one. We can do this one behind our bear. So this one's also a black one. Goes up vertically. The base of it's a little bit thicker. We don't really see the bottom of that tree because it's behind our bear. And then it starts branching off. And those branches go up into our yellow region and just kind of disappear off the canvas. So you want to make sure your branches that are way up towards the top are very thin. And then we can do another tree. You want to create a variety in thicknesses with your trees. So that branch, that tree trunk is a little bit thinner than the first one that I created. You want to just keep painting more trees. This one right here, I'm going to have this one be a large one. This one's going to be the biggest tree that's in the painting. So that one starts, the base of it is just where the top part of our brown area is. 
and it's so it's, it's a little bit thick at the base and it's just going to go very vertical up it's not going to branch out into anything until we get way up in the top part of our tree leaf area so i'm just going to keep letting this line go vertical up and then it's going to get thinner and go off the canvas it's a very large tree trunk. If you want to do other large tree trunks, if you want it to be symmetrical and do another large one on the left side of the painting, you can. So this one's going to have a few branches that are going outwards, but those branches are way up high. Another one over here. And I can possibly do another one down here. Because this tree is a little bit closer up, I'm going to add some brown into it. So I'm just going to grab some of my raw sienna and go back over my tree trunk and kind of incorporate some of that brown color into my tree trunk. That black is going to eat up that brown super fast because it's a strong color and this isn't dry. But I can still add it on there. Gives it a little bit of color. And I am just going to go and continue painting more tree trunks and more branches. I am going to utilize some of the brown in some of my other tree trunks. Gives that a little bit of color variation. So I'm doing another tree, kind of a shorter tree over here on the left. This one's not going to go up to the yellow region. Add some more branches and some of these other trees. Next, I am going to go and add some more gray trees. I'm going to mix a lighter gray on my palette and kind of loosen it up with water. So gray, so white, black, loosely thinned down with water. I'm going to do some very, very far away distant trees. So you can see that lighter gray in there is giving it a little bit of contrast, but also because it's lighter, it makes it look like those trees are much further in the distance and also makes it so it's not so busy. So if all those were solid black, it would be a little bit too busy and our black bear wouldn't stand out very well. It would be disguised by all those dark branches. But I am just gonna do a few gray branches, some that are higher up, maybe some that are much, much further away and all we see is a little vertical line. So I'm doing little vertical lines. Again, this is very thin almost a watercolor style, very light. And you can skip this step too. It is a very subtle detail that if you don't do, it's not gonna make a huge difference in your overall painting. Just create some depth in our forest. Next, I'm gonna add some more color, specifically below the bear's feet, some more shadowy color. I'm gonna loosen up some of the brown and black, some Mars black, raw sienna, a little bit of water, kind of loosened, up, loosened it up. I took my round brush and just did left and right strokes. Create more of a shadowy area under his feet. Also an optional step, you don't have to do that if it's a little bit of a extra detail. Add some more grass texture down there with a little bit of black. Then I'm going to add a little bit of texture to our tree trunk over here on the right. 
So with the titanium white and the number four round brush, I'm gonna do vertical strokes very loosely with that white. I can also add a little bit of white texture to some of the larger trees. So just very loosely vertical white lines give some color interest in some of the darker trees. Next, I am going to add another layer of leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my 12 bright brush and freshen up some of these colors. So starting with the yellow and the white, I want some of my leaves to be overlapping my branches. This is going to create some more depth, more layers in your painting. So add some more leaves to our tree canopy at the top. So these are going to overlap some of our branches. We can grab some of the red. Do a little bit of overlapping. I'm also going to add a little bit more texture to the ground area. So with that raw sienna, a little bit of white on my brush, just a few lighter grass blades. Again, I'm just using the tip of the brush, not the full width of the brush. And I'm painting in short little angled directions using just the tip to create those thin strokes. This is that 12 bright brush. Just a few textured pieces, maybe some longer pieces kind of overlapping our green area but not so much in the shadowy area under the bear. Just creating another layer of texture, adding more paint in that area. If you need to go and touch up parts of your bear, you can just be really careful not to touch it up too much. So for example, I want to go along the edge right here. So using my 12 bright brush and just the black, I just wanna make sure that edge is nice and dark. And adding a few more little textured fur strokes kind of on the bottom area. can't see what my hand is doing there, but I, that left part of the bear that's dark and shadowy, I just added a little tiny bit of black. So just very, very subtle touch-ups in there, but don't lose all of your pretty contrast and color variation. But this is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint our forest bear. Hope you enjoyed this painting. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.